So here's a funny story. So oh. when I when I when I quit my job, yeah, and I've I've already been trading for many many years. I quit my job and I was making. I had a very good job. I made a lot a lot of money at my job. Very happy with it. And the first day that I quit, I'm at my buddy's house. He quit too. We're trading. And I said, I have to make a minimum of 400 bucks. If I don't make 400 bucks, things are bad. Mm -hmm. So I'm up about $360 and it's about, mm -hmm. it's about two o'clock in the afternoon. So what I do, I got to make 400 bucks. Click, 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 click. I walked away minus 700 and something dollars on day one of actually quitting my good job. And now I'm like, oh boy, what did I do? So talk about fear. I had to fight that fear battle again and say, hey, stop, stop being stupid. Everybody, welcome to a new episode. Before we get started, make sure you show a little love. If you're on YouTube, subscribe to the channel and hit the thumbs up button. If you're on Apple Podcasts, make sure you leave us a review, any other platform that you're on, whatever the love looks like, show a little, and then let's get started. Mike Schwartz. I'm at the beach. How you like it? <laughs> oh, it just looks like a perfect little paradise. How are you, yeah, brother? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? I'm doing very well. Thanks for asking. Thanks for coming on. Where, uh, where, where is the beach located that you're at? No, nah, I'm really not at the beach, but in Costa Rica, it's my favorite place. I go there once a year. I love it. Been going there since 2000. You're in Costa Rica right now. No, no, I'm not. I was joking. I'm actually oh. remodeling the, I'm remodeling my office. Nice. So I put the green screen up because I got a mess everywhere right now. Sure. I hear that. <laughs> I hear that. Very cool. Now, where is, uh, where are you calling from? Where is Holmes? Uh, Florida. Oh, right on. Very cool. Yeah. I, uh. I haven't been to Florida in so freaking long, but big I'm, fan, big fan. I'm just south of Tampa, just south of Tampa. Yeah, right on. Well, so, listen, I'm very excited to have this conversation and just to get to know you. Uh, I was excited when Ruben set it up and I'll be excited for you to, for everybody on the channel to meet you and to kind of dive right into things. Sounds good. Uh, we're kind of talking at a weird time. I know um, we're recording this Friday, kind of in the middle of the afternoon. It's one o'clock here. Uh, on the Eastern time. Are, are you trading today? Yeah, I'm actually done. I had a good day. I'm done. Done for the day. In and out quick on Fridays is my MO. Yeah, 100% me too. Like if I'm on the screens late the day on afternoon on Friday, something's usually wrong. <laughs> it's not well, usually a good thing. Well, we actually got a volume profile rotation right now. It's almost about to hit the naked POC from yesterday. Okay. That man, I could have been, I could have captured a little bit more, but you know, I, I got in, got out, a peace of mind on Friday. It's, it's a good place to be. Oh, you're not joking. It really, really is. So uh, talk to me about this while we're kind of just kicking things off here. Um, what do you trade as far as products? It seems like I, I saw you with a variety of things. Um, I primarily trade the four indices, the Dow, the okay. ES, the Russell, the NASDAQ. Okay. And then I also trade the Euro on occasion, the 6E contract. I okay. also trade crude oil. Gold, yep. I think that's it. Okay, so your futures seven. exclusively. Yeah, yeah. Before I was, so I've traded. I started out trading stocks, and then I went to options, stock and options, and then I've traded stocks, options, futures, and forex all at the same time. But I really like futures a lot better than anything else. For sure. Yeah, I hear that definitely. Okay, so you're trading futures, which is, that's awesome. I, I wasn't exactly aware what you were getting into. Um, now, just by way of introduction, how long have you been trading? Mike. Since two, since about July of 2005. 2005. Yeah. Okay. Right on. So you're a, a seasoned veteran. I've seen a lot. I've, I've took some, I took some smackings along the way. Uh -huh. that, learn, uh -huh. that, that, learn, that learning process was a little bit steep. Sure. Okay. So this is 2005. This is a long time ago. So what, if you don't mind, could you kind of just paint us a picture of, I always like to just hear about the trading journey. What got you into it? You know, where did you start? Why did you start? If you can kind of just take us on a little little journey. Yeah, that's pretty easy. So, you know, at work, I, I had a job and we basically got paid, you know, per job. So if you weren't doing nothing, you got no pay. So like commission, you know, yep. where, you know, a lot of people, they come into work, they punch a time clock, they get paid. For right. me, if I wasn't doing something, I didn't get paid. So yep. I have a friend that worked with me um, at work and I'd go in there and talk his ear off. I just puke into his ear all day. He goes, hey, if I was you, I'd learn how to day trade. I was like, Pfft. How do you do that? He goes, goes on Google. Look, you can go right here. So I said, all right. So Investopedia had a, had a simulator and wow. I traded two option contracts, you know, two different days, back to back, made money. I said, 
this is easy. Open up a live <laughs> account and say, wow, this is so easy. <laughs> it's, the, it's the hardest easy money you'll ever make in your life. <laughs> hey, if, if you can conquer the six inches between your left ear and your right ear, you're good. For sure. Okay, sorry, sorry, go ahead. So continue. Uh, you, the options trading simulator went well. And then what next? And then I opened up a live account. And <laughs> once I opened up a live account, I was like, huh, this isn't so easy. <laughs> How much did you put so, in your first live account? Um, $2,000. I never blew it up, but it came pretty darn close. Oh, but I, ne I, I never blew it up. Right. It was up and down, up and down. And essentially, I came up with a conclusion because I was with Scott's Trade was the first brokerage I opened up a stock account with. Sure. They're, no, they're, no, they're no longer around, but I opened up account and I came to a conclusion. I can't make money because they didn't have a way to add the MACD indicator to your charts. It has to be the indicator why you can't make money, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's what I thought anyways. But, you know, after unturning every rock out there, it boils down to a lot more than any one indicator. It's really more mindset than anything. Uh-huh. And risk management, proper position sizing. That's really the key to everything. Sure, sure. So, okay. So this was, what happened after your first funded account? You just, you never blew it up. So you just ended up sticking with that. Did you? Um, I, ended up, I ended up switching over to TradeStation from there because now I have all these technical indicators that's going to make life better. And then I started trading options as I was struggling trading stocks. I moved yeah. into options and I found a lot of success. I yep. went on like a 13 month in a row winning streak. I was basically trading vertical spreads and iron condors. Okay. Then the financial crisis happened in 08. Yep. Lost it all in one month. So, wow. I mean, but, but you know what? That's like, you know, that's my master's degree. I learned a lot from that experience. At that time, it was not fun. And oh, no. I couldn't run away from any you know, anywhere you looked on TV, everybody was talking about how bad it is. The economy is crashing, the banks, and I'm in all these bad positions. I didn't get out where I should have, right? Yeah. Rule number one. And the guy that actually taught this strategy, I knew I was on, the, I should have probably got out that night before he had the webinar. But I was like, ah, I'll wait and see what he has to say. Happened to find out he was in the same trade. He goes, it might go a little bit lower, but it'll bounce back. So I was like, I won't break the rule. The one time I didn't break the rule, I got, I got wiped out. I didn't get wiped out. I got wiped out all the way back to my starting balance. Damn. And then I got, I got it all back within a month and a half, a month and a half, two months. And then I lost it all again. And then from there, it took me probably a year, year and a half to get back. But that, from that point on, that's when I learned, Hey, you can't just, you know, gunsling it. You have to approach the market methodically. You have to just slow profits and just slowly grind it back up. Don't let any one day, you know, to or any one trade wipe you totally out. You need yeah. to be along to fight another day. Like if you get a scratch on your arm, you, you can recover from the scratch. If you get stabbed with a butcher knife, it's going to take a lot longer to heal from that. Sure. So I, I try to, you know, have the losses a lot smaller than, mm -hmm. you know, having these big blowout days. For sure. For sure, for sure. Okay, so very interesting. Um, and then trial neared your way through that. Um, when did you jump over to futures? Was this kind of recent or has this been years ago? I started trading futures back in 08, 08 ish. Oh, okay. 08. Yeah. I, was I was trading futures and Forex around the same time. Yep. And I actually met a gentleman that he was actually working with the guy that taught the options course, but he was one of the students with him. And he was more, he kind of filled in when everybody else wasn't around. Right. And he, he helped me put a lot of the pieces together. So I was using a lot of different tools, but yep. he actually showed me how to use them together. Um, because a lot of times you'll hear about multiple time frame analysis and use this, but he showed me how to combine everything together and create mm -hmm. confluence. So you have mm -hmm. more than one, of, one thing agreeing to go ahead and take a trade. And that really was, was a game changer for me at that point. Interesting. Very cool. Now, how how would you describe your strategy? For I, have I, have a, I have a lot of different strategies. So a lot of it revolves around the profile. So I set up and look at what type of day I expect it's going to be on said day. And I like to look for volume profile rotation trades, but I also break that, pro that profile down through different sections of the day. So at nine o'clock, I use a different value than I use for my overnight trades. And then at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, I have another set of value areas that I use. Now, if we have a rotation going on within the daily profile and it matches up with the smaller profile that I've broken down, then I can go for a runner. The runner trade can go down for that daily targets. 
So that's how I can really capture some of those larger moves. Also recently, and probably in the last, since September, October, I purchased a software called Algobox. Now I use Algobox yeah. in relations with a profile. So a profile gives me the direction I'm looking to go. And with Algobox, I can size up a lot more because I'm taking smaller profits and then just pushing one runner out towards where some of those volume profile levels are. And that's really been a game changer. Very interesting. So when you're using Algobox, you have just a set of criteria and it executes it for you? No, I don't believe in that. Well, I wouldn't say I don't believe in it. I prefer to manually click the buttons myself, but it's looking at, at like a lot of harmonic patterns, which is something I've traded in the past, like Gartley patterns, um, ciphers, shark patterns, things like that. It also shows, you know, like um, algorithmic activity or high volume spikes, which is things that I've traded in the past. So a lot of the techniques built within Algobox are things that I've manually done in the past, but Algobox just makes it easier for me to see. So I can trade on a much smaller, like, like normally my biggest stop loss is normally about 15 ticks. Okay, on the ES? Yes, on the ES, that's, that's my max. Most of the time I'm not getting stopped. Most of the time I stop, I'm getting stopped out at about six to eight ticks. Okay. But, it, but occasionally if I get a full stop, it'd be about 15 ticks. Uh, Algo box. That is um, Vinny. Vinny, yeah. Vinny, Vinny, okay. Vinny. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is uh, is he still beefing with uh, ICT? I don't know. I don't know if he is or not. He may or he may not. I know that they didn't get along too good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay, uh, okay. So I guess forgive me. I'm a little confused. Um, but I'm interested. What does the algo box do for you then? If it's not manually or if it's not trading, executing for you, so what is, what is, what is it doing? So let's say, I wish I could share my screen, but we have harmonic patterns. Okay. And so let's say that, um, let's say I have a volume profile rotation trade. Let's say that that value area from high to low, let's say it's 20 points. Okay. Right. So once we've broken back into value, let's say we we're above value area high and we broke down below it. Yep. Well, now I can look for smaller entries. Like if I have a harmonic pattern, I can look to enter on that, put my stop loss on the other side of that box versus on the other side of value, and then look to capture that same range still. So it gives okay. me another way to enter that larger picture that I already have using the volume profile. Okay, I got you. So it, it, it like actually displays something on your charts. Yes, it, it comes okay. up with little boxes and yep. it labels it shark, uh, cipher, um, a bat, Gartley, things like that. And that's stuff that I've traded in the past. But before when I traded like that, it was like on a 30 or 60 minute chart. And yeah. I had to manually draw out all those levels. Algobox automatically draws it out for you. So on a smaller time frame, it can do the work for me. If the price never gets there, then it's not wasted time that I wasted. Mm -hmm. But it is another way for me to enter the market and participate in what I believe is shaping up using the volume profiles. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, very interesting. Nice. Do you, what's like a average trade day for you? Because it seems like you're watching several good products. Um, is it normal that you trade kind of all those throughout a day or typically not? Well, normally I won't be in more than three products at the same time. Because if I'm using okay. a volume, if I'm doing a volume profile rotation trade, it's not uncommon for me to capture 10, 20, 30, 40 points in a, in a single trade. The volume profile, I can capture some larger moves. And that's why I'm saying Algobox will let me size that up. And I can still push that one target way out where I normally would, but I can pick up some extra profits along the way. But that same bigger picture idea, just give me a better pinpoint entry on trying to get into that trade. Hmm. So I'm still using the, the bigger picture of where I think it's going with the volume profile to create my overall analysis. Yep. Then I'm just using that to kind of pinpoint a better entry with a much smaller um, stop loss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, got it, got it. Um, do you trade a funded account or are you trading? Have you ever traded a funded account? I have, and I, I blew up my last funded account when I had a problem with Ninja Trader, which I just had again. This time I didn't have a, a trade on, but Ninja Trader actually locked up my computer. I was did it like hard two Fridays ago? No, uh, oh. no, I think it was about three weeks ago. Okay. And I think roughly, but essentially when I booted the computer back up, all of my data connections were gone. It was like a Ninja Trader was loaded back from basic with a SIM license key. So I had to go back and try to get everything when it wasn't working. I was clicking the mouse. Well, it was still firing off trades. So I traded too many contracts and you know, that was it. But I primarily trade my live account more than I do a funded account. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay. But you have, I forgive me. You just said it. You are, are you currently in a, a program? I'm currently, well your, right, excuse me. As well as your live account? Correct. Oh, okay, primary, correct. I trade my live account more than I do the other one. The other one is just extra, extra money. Yeah. 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 What, what company are you using? Earn to trade. Earn to trade. Okay. I've yeah. used Lilu. I use Lilu too. I was funded with Lilu for probably eight months, a year or two ago, maybe. Okay. Something like that. Yeah. Um, but what I didn't realize, one thing that I learned when I was funded with Lilu, once I got yeah. funded, I didn't realize you couldn't get paid out until like forever <laughs> before you uh, get a real payout. So it's, you know, you have to, you have to trade, I think it was 20 or 30 days plus have the, the reserve built up. And I didn't realize all the hoops. And then you couldn't even take your full withdrawal. You could only withdraw like a thousand or 1500 or something like that. I was like, Hmm, I wish I would have you know, read the details beforehand. <laughs> yeah, that's brutal. I, I've heard, I forget that it was Lilu, but I heard that like, that's an issue and it's a big deal. If you're able to just take as much as you want out, you know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm myself am in a funded trader program right now. And, um, <laughs> it's been a cool experience. I think so far, um, like two Fridays ago, uh, rhythmic data went down and I was stuck inside of a trade and it caused me a whole bunch of heartache. Um, but other than that, everything's been pretty good with it. So, and, and that's the one bad thing I would say about the trading funded programs is when you're in a trade, if something goes haywire, you can't just call a trade desk and say, Hey, get me out of the trade. Like with your live account, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, it's, it, it's a little bit more, it takes a little bit more time to get that resolved and you might already be busted out by that point. So yeah, yeah. For, for sure. It is an interesting dynamic. And I, I, would be happy. I think maybe if we have some solutions to this in the future, I, I've really been turned on to the funded trader scene recently. And um, I envision it being a, a very, a very nice path into futures trading. Um, I feel like just with the people that I, I work with and I'm talking to, it's such a hard transition going from simulation, kind of testing out ideas, going into live. And it's just, there's no way to do that transition without experiencing Hefty drawdowns. Um, yeah. So it's funny you say that because the, the same guy I told you at work that I puked into his ear and he got me into trading. Yeah. Well, now he's trying to learn how to trade. We've been friends for over 20 years and he's in some account. And he's like, I want to do live money. I was like, Hey, don't, don't do live money yet. So he did a little bit of live money, lost a little bit of money. I said, stop. I was like, look, just sign up with one of the funded trading programs. Yeah. And then you got real skin in the game because you are paying a monthly fee. Yeah. So it feels, it feels a lot more real. And then sure. if you pass, you actually can, you know, get paid to play the game. Yeah. And you know, now he's like, wow, I wish I would have done this earlier. So he's starting to see all the little mistakes that he's making, yep. but it's only costing him. He hasn't had to reset yet, but it's only, it's only paper money at this point, but it, you know, it feels real. So that's what I like sure. about it. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Very different than a simulator, which is very nice, you know, for some of those issues. Okay, cool. Now um, let's say the indices right now, how, how are you finding the, I know you had a good day today. Good job. Um, how have you been finding the action recently? Like, are well, you struggling right now at all? No, nah, I have, I've, I've been killing it. Really? So, so Wednesday, I was actually watching your live stream Wednesday morning because okay. another, another streamer that I watched in the morning wasn't on and you popped up. And I think oh, it was because Ruben's been contacting me. So he popped uh, up. I was like, Oh, let me watch this. So I was yeah. watching you and where you were struggling a little bit in the morning, I was like, I, I wanted to tell you but as i was looking at i was looking for the volume profile to rotate back up which i think you were too and i was watching the vix so i waited till the vix started to dip down yeah then, then i hit it and it was a lot easier because once the vix started to give it up the vix gave it up before the es actually started to move if you go back and look at the charts you actually see it it gives you a heads up on that interesting very interesting yeah i've yeah. been uh been finding this action very brutal <laughs> to say the least. Uh, yes. I've, had, I've had to make some real adjustments here. Well, even like today, like this morning, uh -huh. we basically broke above yesterday's value area high, and then yeah. we got back in it, and we're almost at the POC now. So yeah. in my criteria is once we broke through value area high, I would be looking for that rotation back down towards the POC. So now I'm just pounding the trades, looking for ways to trade down to that location. Yeah, just looking to join those shorts. 
Yeah. Now, if we get now where I would, where I'd have to reverse course, if we got back above value area high, I'd say, Hey, things are changing. Now I need to shift back long. Yeah. Because we broke above value area high and then we got back down. And if yep. we get back above it, then I got to respect the strength of the bulls out there and try to participate and look for longs at that point. Yeah. When you are like in the morning session, when it was chopping around, do you sideline when that's going on or are you active in that as well? I'm usually active in that as well. So that's one of the things that Algobox has helped me out tremendously with. So because on Algobox, I'm using such small targets for target one that, you know, I can pick up a quick, you know, six to 10 ticks real easy. Okay. And then I can, if it goes, then I still have those larger targets I'm targeting using the volume profile. Yeah. Do you, are you giving it, you said you're not giving much wiggle room. Are you scratching out a lot right now just with the chop that we're experiencing? A lot of times I'll scratch out on the runner trade, but on, on the target one, normally I don't scratch out. Usually it'll still be a loss of at least, you know, four ticks or so. Usually mm -hmm. I don't scratch out break even. Usually I let it fight for a little bit. See if I can really get to go because with Algobox, usually I can pick the turning point pretty good. Okay. And if you're wrong, you're, if you're wrong, you're just wrong. I mean, not every trade is going to work regardless what strategy you use. Sure, sure. I learned that a long time ago. Quit trying to chase perfection. It doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, that's a good, uh, it's a good quote there. Speaking of trading quotes, not that that's a trading quote necessarily, but do you have, uh, just as an interesting topic, do you have any good trading quotes that you like use as a mantra or that you stick to or that means something to you? The market can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent. Uh-huh. That's an oldie but goodie, isn't it? Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's a really good one. I, I heard this wasn't specifically for trading. Uh, and I've said this different ways, but recently I've heard somebody say pioneering doesn't pay. It was in it was just in the idea of, of business. And um, the idea that trying to predict where the market is going basically as opposed to waiting for, as you said, confluence with several things, or at least waiting for the market to show its hand, which is something we have the ability to do before we put out. Um, it is something that I am always on that edge of, of trying to, you know, be the, trying to see the move that's coming before it happens. And uh, pioneering doesn't pay. That's something that's been meaning a lot to me lately. But, but you can get paid if you get it right. If you get it right, they can, it can pay pretty, pretty uh, handsomely. Yeah, it is. Uh, it would be the best risk to reward situations for sure. But I think that there is a, a very real time where there's just nothing to back it up yet. And then uh, uh, if you're not careful, I'll find myself in a lot of like low quality trades. And so there, there's, there is a point where, okay, this at least gives me enough to, I'm not the first one in, I'm not trying to catch the very bottom of this, not trying to be the pioneer. Um, but you know, it can still catch a lot of the opportunity. And then that's where so, I'll find too, a lot of the, uh, you know, my best trades really come from kind of catching the meat of the move, not from trying to, you know, grab the entire thing. So normally if, if I'm going to play around near the highs or the lows of the day, yeah. and a lot of times I can pick the turn pretty good, yeah. but on those trades, if I'm going for that, I'm, I'm taking a very small profit because I know it's very likely it's going to keep going past me. I'm probably going to be wrong. So I try just to get a little bit, see if I can get my stop loss to break even. If I'm right, I'm going to get a big winner. If not, yeah. hopefully I got target one off and I might break even at that point. Yeah. That's not always the case. Sometimes, you know, you get stopped out and I try not just to, you know, keep trying at that idea. So usually I'll give an idea two shots. If I'm wrong, then I just, I got to call it quits. I got to wait. I, I just push myself back for a few minutes let, let the situation change a little bit and see yeah. if I'm reading things a little bit better and then come back and fire off some more trades. Yeah. A lot of really nice things you just said right there, that idea of like being okay, missing a trade. If it's a valid idea, but potentially something's going on in the action where you're just getting chopped out of it, just like chill, let that trade pass, maybe miss it, but you know, stay in the game for the day. So you're not taking the butcher ax, you know, to your arm. Um, and the other thing you said there about treating, like being very well aware uh, of where your trade location is, that you are trading at something at the high of day, and you're treating that a very specific way to where in that situation, you are looking to be very quick to take something off and probably understand you're going to get chopped out, where in other situations, I'm sure you're going to be much more aggressive about holding on to things. Um, and, and I think the, the general idea a big issue I think that 
people struggle with is trying to take some of the complexities and even the dynamics of, of the market and trying to make it too simple, too simple where there's just this one thing to do in all situations. Um, That's a, <laughs> yeah, it, I agree. It's, yeah, it's a big issue. And just having the wisdom or, you know, you said it, but it's, a, it's something I think that should be stressed because um, it's important having different things in your tool belt for how not necessarily completely different methods, but different ways that you'll execute that. And just having the wisdom to understand this is a situation where if I don't secure something fast, the likelihood I'm getting chopped out is too high. I got to you know, mitigate this. This is a trade that if it works, I just want to be all in on. And, I, and I'm not going to cut this one short, you know, and having that wisdom is really important. So I'm glad you said that. Well, a lot of times to me, for me too, if we break back into value, like we're already outside of value, we break back in it. On yeah. those trades, I typically will give it a little bit more room. I give it a little bit more chance to fight because I know it's a high probability that we're going to at least come back and hit the POC level. Yeah. In my okay. opinion. I mean, that's from all my testing. That's that's yeah. what I believe. So I give that trade a lot more room to fight than I do a lot of, a lot of the other trades too. Yeah. Do you ever use 24-hour profiles or do you always I section do. it out? No, I use 24 along with weekly profiles, along uh -huh. with section them out. Okay. So like the weekly profile, would that be 24 hour days or would that be like just regular trading hours? 24 hour days. Okay. Yeah. Very interesting. Nice. Because I want to see where the whole move was. So we can see uh -huh. when the auction finish. I want to yeah. see where value is. I want to see where the POCs are because on a weekly chart, we'll also get naked POCs. And then sometimes we can have a weekly volume profile rotation in effect. And then you see it on the daily and on the, as you break it down. So yeah. you get in on, as it breaks, as it breaks down, and then you can capture, you can ride the runner for that whole bigger move on the way down or up, yeah. whichever, you know, through the, through the rotation of the profile. Yeah. 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 Very, it, it's slightly different way I would look at it, but the same idea there of just having kind of uh, a few different lenses, but all pointing in the same direction, going to the same place. It makes everything more confident and, uh, you know, much better for sure. Yeah, interesting. Um, could you mind, this is always, I, I'm interested in these type of things. Could you kind of walk us through just a, like, let's say a typical day from the time you wake up, it's a trading day. Can you kind of walk us through like what steps you take and what that looks like for you? Well, the first thing I do when I wake up, <laughs> I uh -huh. roll over. If I wake up middle night or anything, I check my phone. The first thing I check, I look at the VIX because I want to get an idea of, is there a lot of fear in the market or not? So I look at the VIX to see what type of you know sentiment I think is going to be in the market. If the VIX is up and the ES is up too, like we had the other day, then something's going on. Somebody's lying. Either there's fear for no reason or that ES that's already up is likely to come back down that day. The next thing I look at is how much restful sleep did I get? So I look on my phone. If I didn't have at least three hours of restful sleep, I'm more prone to get a mash button and, and really trade out of my, out of my character. I'm like, likely to make a lot more mistakes than I normally would. So I need at least three hours of restful sleep. That doesn't mean I slept for only three hours, but because the Apple Watch has a sleep app and it'll tell you how much of your sleep was actually restful sleep. Sure. I need at least three hours to perform to perform at my peak performance. Mm. And if I get more than five hours of restful sleep, I, it's just the opposite. So I need to be between three and five hours of restful if you sleep. Get too much, it drains yep. you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's interesting. And you you track this with Apple Watch? Correct. You wear it to bed? Is that yep. how it works? Yeah, very, yep. very interesting. So yeah. I, I, usually, I usually put it on the charger as I eat dinner. And then by the time I'm eating dinner, it's charged up and I put it back on. I wear it 24 hours a day other than when I'm eating dinner. Okay. Yeah. Very interesting. I use an aura ring, but tracking the sleep has been a very, it's been like a very interesting thing to have that metric where you understand for me, it's like a readiness score, but if the readiness score is below a certain level, I just know I'm going to be more apt to having like distraction thoughts. My lack of focus is going to be higher. My, my ability to like go on tilt and not be able to pull myself back is going to be worse, you know? And, um, if I, if it's over 80, I know like today it's going to be a much easier to be focused and I can be more aggressive even. And, and yep. the, yeah, having that metric is very nice. Um, so that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. So you'll, uh, first thing you do is check your phone and then, uh, you, you'll check your sleep. What's, what's next on the old rocket docket for you? Well, next I really get up. 
take a shower or I don't take a shower, brush my teeth, get ready, put some clothes on. And then I either, go, I either go to the gym, which I meet my friend there, or I go to my friend's house. We hang out. We'll watch the market a little bit. We'll trade a little bit. Then I come home, eat lunch with the family, and then I trade the afternoon session. So in the morning, I'll trade with my friend over at his house hmm. sometimes, and I'll go to a gym because I, I perform better in the afternoon than I do in the morning session. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Because what will happen is right at 930, I'll start seeing action and yep. I'll, get, I'll get enticed to, to jump. Where at, let's say at like one o'clock, one thirty, probably about one thirty, two o'clock, I've already seen how the day is probably going to unfold. It's just a lot easier to pick it up. The trades don't happen as fast, but it's a lot easier to see where the market's likely going. It is crazy how the same trading day, the morning and the afternoon, a lot of times it's like completely different worlds, you know. And and I find I've never been able to really put together what the deal is with it, but I've like I haven't found the consistency of like it's always morning or it's always afternoons, but I find I go through these patches where the mornings are just stellar, the afternoons are kind of lacking, or the mornings are just busted, the afternoons are beautiful. You know, like I feel like it's, and then sometimes it's the whole day's bad or the you know uh, one or the other. But I find like sometimes it goes through these periods. I feel like now's a period for me where the mornings are very brutal, the afternoons tend to be a little bit better for me. Yeah. See, that's funny. Lately, the mornings have been a lot better to me than normally they are. <laughs> so it, it's, it's weird. It, it switches. Like you're saying, it switches. But lately, the mornings have been better for me than what they normally are. I don't... Maybe we should uh, <laughs> mesh together. And <laughs> it's kind of it's, it's weird how that works. But yeah, you know, very cool. OK, yeah. uh, so we are eating breakfast. OK, so you trade with your your. That's a really nice setup. Uh, you know, I have, a, I, have a, I have a whole other computer at his house with four monitors, four 32 inch monitors. Sometimes we'll, we'll sit there, we'll play video games in between, just kind of joke around and stuff, look at the markets. So if I ah. see something, I already know the levels that I'm looking at. So if I see something popping off, then I know it's time to, you know, start to get busy. Let's, let's, you know, execute some trades. Um, if not, we're playing video games and I, I've been going to the morning, to the gym in the morning three times a week. And that really helps out a lot too. puts yeah. you in a, a better mood for the day. And, you know, it's just life's a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. What kind and, of video uh, games you guys playing? <laughs> really retro. It's really funny. So neither one of us are baseball fans, but we're okay. both very, very competitive. So we've been playing the old Nintendo, Nintendo, the old NES Nintendo. Yeah. R RBI baseball. <laughs> That's fun. That's very so, cool. and then we play some motocross games sometimes too, because we both were racing motocross for a while. So he actually got me into racing motocross ah, years back. I haven't, I haven't been on the bike here in a couple of years, but he's the one that got me into racing motocross, and he spanks my butt every every time. Out, you can't beat him. He's just, he has every single thing dialed in, and it's huh. just you can't, you can't beat him. Can't beat him. That's my conclusion. He puts in a cheat code. I'm always lying, to, you know, joking with him, saying, "Ah, oh, you put a cheat code in again." But yeah, simple fact: he's just better than I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that attitude, I'm sure he is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, racing motocross, though, that is really cool. Uh, you know what? You you've got like a motocross look about you. I feel like for some reason, if you told me right now that you race motocross, like I would say, of course, like it. it Seems like you got that look for some reason. I don't know what that even means, but I really like to surf more than I like to like to go motocross. Really? That's why I go to Costa Rica. I go to Costa Rica to go surfing. That's ah. what took me there the first time. So okay, Costa Rica. I, prefer, for... I, I, I would prefer to go surfing the race motocross, but I like them both. I like them both. Interesting. But well, those Costa, are very good surfing. I'm le, surfing. I'm less likely to break bones <laughs> versus okay. motocross. Motocross sure. you're a lot more prone to get hurt. So yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Very, very cool. Okay. Um, what about, what would you say, I, I know you said you're doing pretty good right now, just out of curiosity, like what would you say has most recently been like the biggest struggle you've had to work through? And the reason I, I'll ask this is I oh. feel like it's kind of this never ending stream of being dialed in with your trading and then kind of drifting off with something and then kind of like having to crack and, and then you're for some reason being a little bit aggressive with your risk. Let's calm this down, you know? Um, and uh, so is there anything that comes to mind as far as maybe a most recent or current, you know, struggle that you're having? Not really recent, but when I, when I find myself struggling, yeah. it's usually because 
I get a bias in my head and then yeah. I start, I start tunnel vision and I oh. tune, you know, you start, you start tuning out the other stuff. That's like, Hey dummy, look at this right here. Oh, talk about it's, it. it's right there in your face. And it's like, uh, you know, and then once you can, once you can be on a neutral footing where you don't really care if the market goes up or down and you're just looking for the opportunity, yeah. it, it's a lot easier. But once you, you've either had a couple of losses trying to go along, you're like, no, it's going to go up. You know, yeah. you keep, you keep trying that idea. You know, the sooner you can get that out of your head, the better off you're going to be. And I even, I struggled with that um, a few months back, even, you know, yeah. I got, I got bent on this idea and, you know, I struggled for a little bit. Yeah. It's very funny you say that. Cause that's probably one of my biggest struggles that just always comes back around and probably even um, currently with the choppy action that we're seeing a lot, I'm just having a lot of ideas right now that are not following through or not going all the way or some version of that. And um, this actually, that same exact thing that's happened to me on Wednesday, got locked into the idea of, uh, I flipped the script and I was looking for a short, it was the last trade that I took on the stream. Um, there was no reason for me to be short. I was looking short, popped higher, kicked me out. And looking back on it, it was just that same, it got married to the idea and it was just a very dumb mistake. So, so one, of, one of the things I do each night too, is I go back and I look at my trades okay. and I look at my results and say, how much should I make on this trade? And then I, I mark off when the market's not moving, I get the drawing tool out and say, how much should I have made? And then okay. I start comparing the two and saying, Hey, quit being an idiot. Look how much money it's costing you by not doing what you're supposed to do. Mm. That helps, that helps me out tremendously because then you see it in black and white, you might say, Hey, I made a, a, a bad call. I shouldn't have done that. But once you start seeing how much money is really costing you by correcting a simple mistake, just do what you do, what you're supposed to do. Yeah. It, it gets a lot easier to you know follow your plan. Also, yeah. if, if I can, if I can make a little bit of money overnight, so sometimes I'll trade like a micro, so I'm, uh, overnight trades, I'll trade like a micro contract. Okay. And if I can wake up and I already have, you know, 50, hundred, $200 in my account, Okay. I start off the next day. I'm already ahead. So now yeah. once I'm already ahead, it's easier just to keep going. Once you're behind, then it's like, ah, oh, you know, you're just digging, 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 and you're already in a, in a bad note. But if once I can get ahead, then I can really just keep it going. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, when you're doing the overnight deal, you're not going to sit there and actively trade it. You kind of put it on and then you come back in the morning. Yeah, I look for a lot. Most of the time, I look for a larger volume profile rotation yeah. or a volume profile level that I'm trying to target. And yeah. then I put it out there. Normally, it's it's going to be, you know, 15, 20 points away or, or more. It's okay, usually yeah. a much larger target. But again, it's a micro. So if you hit a 20 point target with a micro, that's 100 bucks that you wake up to that essentially did the work for you while you were sleeping. Mm. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Very cool. OK, Um Awesome, man. Awesome. Now, awesome. Some, now, some days you wake up and you're in the red. That's not so fun. But, you know, it's a lot better when you wake up and you're in the green. So <laughs> no, no doubt. No doubt. <laughs> yeah, that's a big a big focus for me right now is is I'm keeping the size very small unless I can feel that I'm getting in flow with what's happening, which is a little few and far between for me at the moment. But, you know. Hey, but here's the good news. The way I look What's at good that, news? once I start having, once I start getting into a downturn or, you know, a couple yeah. of bad trades, I know I'm that much closer to my next winning trade, my next, you know, epic run that I'm about to be on. That's yeah. the way I look at it. Instead of, you know, the being thought. Debbie Downer saying, oh man, look, I had this. If you know the results of your strategy, you yeah. know, you're gonna have ups and downs. So if you're in a down period, you know, you're just around the corner for that next up period. But if you uh -huh. kick yourself out of the game and you want to be Debbie Downer, you're not going to be able to participate in that move up. Yeah, that's a very, that's a very nice uh, frame. That's a good mental state to be in is this too will pass. And it is, it's very easy in trading, especially if you don't have a trading buddy or just in general as retail traders, we, we tend to be somewhat isolated. And um, it's very easy to just get inside of uh, this is the new norm or to get in some kind of a, a, a feedback loop of being negative about your results, which just lead to more trading frustrations, something to snap out of, uh, you know, as soon as possible for sure. Um, can I ask you, what would you say is something that you do off the screens that probably has like the biggest impact helping you with your trading? Honestly, the time I put in going back and trading in market replay and going back and marking off all my trades. So over the weekend, even though I've been trading since 2005, on Saturday, I still have to trade. 
Sunday, I still have to trade because I feel like if I don't stay at it, I'm going to be a little bit rusty come Monday morning. So I always want to stay on it. I don't want to take a break from it. I need to stay on it. And if I've had any bad days, I keep track of bad days I've had or more difficult days. And I go back and trade that on market replay and just keep hammering it, hammering it, hammering it. Because then I can start to spot when that situation is going to set up. Yep. And hopefully I can keep myself out of that situation next time. Yeah. Very cool. I, I feel like that's a little bit of a on the screen thing, though, Do which was going to be my next question. So we'll stick with that one. Uh, but do you feel like, is there something that you do that's like completely devoid of being on the screens that helps you with your trading at all? Um, other than being on my screen, like my, my other friend that I told you where I was basically puking into his ear, he got me into trading, yeah. me trying to help him learn because he started from ground zero. So he keeps trying to chase all these shiny objects, but by me having to help him and point him in the right directions, Hey, you should be looking at this. Yeah. I think it, it brings a more calm, calm to me. And the fact that I'm having to point these things out to him, it yeah. kind of reinforces to myself, Hey, this is what I need to be doing as well. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. That's a nice thing of uh, explaining what you're doing. And it's also, it's very, I feel like it's very difficult to truly understand something. Like it's very easy to maybe memorize or, or, or uh, learn something, but the difference between learning something and understanding it is very, very different. And I think even schooling and, and certain traditional paths kind of teach us how to memorize and how to learn stuff, but understanding it is maybe something that goes underway. And I think all of us have a fairly difficult time truly understanding stuff. And, um, but the point being of what I was saying, or the point being for that is when you are able to clearly communicate something to somebody else, that's a very good, under, that's a very good cue into the idea that you actually understand it. And there's a lot of things that I know, like I kind of know, but if I tried to sit down and explain to somebody, I would have a hard time. And it's a good you know, indication that you don't fully understand it. But the practice of what you do, being able to explain that to somebody, even if they're not a trader, I think would be like a helpful thing to help people just understand, do I really know my method? Do I really know what my approach is? Uh, so that's, a, that's an interesting one. I'm glad you said that. Can I give you a open-ended question that I'm just interested to hear like yeah. how, you would, how you would answer it? Because there are so many angles you can go. And I just like asking people this who are seasoned in the markets, but if, if I just had to say, uh, blanketly, why is trading so hard? And what do we do about it? Um, it's all, okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, th that's the question. And I know there's not one thing, but I would just be interested what would the direction you would take for that question would be. Honestly, treat it like a video game. The only reason trading is hard is because you have a fear of loss. If there's no real risk of loss, you would just sit there and click the buttons where you should. But because you're afraid of losing something, then you, ah, I don't know if I should take this. You wait too long to get in a trade. Then you get in late. What happens? You go down and you get stopped out. Or you get the fear of placing a trade. You don't place a trade. Or you have the fear of missing out of a trade. It's all based on fear. Mm. Fear. Why trading is so hard. It's unbelievable. What a bad frame it is to be operating out of fear, uh, so especially in the markets. So here's a funny story. So oh. when I, when I, when I quit my job yeah, and I've, I've already been trading for many, many years, I quit my job and I was making, I had a very good job. I made a lot, a lot of money at my job. Very happy with it. And the first day that I quit, I'm at my buddy's house. He quit too. We're trading. And I said, I have to make a minimum of 400 bucks. If I don't make 400 bucks, things are bad. Mm -hmm. So I'm up about $360 and it's about, <laughs> it's about two o'clock in the afternoon. So what I do, I got to make 400 bucks. Click, 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 click. I walked away minus 700 and something dollars on day one of actually quitting my good job. And now I'm like, oh boy, what did I do? So talk about fear. I had to fight that fear battle again and say, hey, stop, stop being stupid. All right. Yeah. Because in all reality, the next day was a good day. But if I would have stopped at 360 bucks, the next day, I would have been well ahead on day two. But yeah. because now I'm calling back from that $700 loss, you know, I lost all the 360 plus $700. Ugh. So, I mean, it was a, a tragic turn of events that afternoon. But, yeah. you know, the, the moral of the story was I shouldn't have been focused. The average, as long as I average out, you know, at least two grand a week, I'm happy. Hmm. Life is, life is good. I pay the bills, whatnot. 
Yeah, it's you know what I had. Uh, I was just talking with somebody, and they were they were stressing the importance of not doing stupid things in your trading because it really reinforces like these these almost like emotional scarrings that go with you. And I think at a subconscious level, you go and you like blow out some money. You're up three hundred. You find yourself down seven hundred. These kind of they almost create like these emotional scars that in the future they just kind of start piling up as you do stupid things, um, which make it very difficult to just trade unencumbered or, you know, to trade and not be fearful, uh, you know, to your point there, which is really interesting. If somebody was, or, or if you were, you know, earlier, or if you ever find yourself um, being afraid, like afraid to pull the trigger, afraid to get into the market, what would you suggest? Like, what would you tell somebody if I just came to you and say, hey, uh, I'm having a hard time. I see setups. I, I can't really get in. I, if I do get in, I freak out. What, what would you, what would like your first step be to help somebody with that? In all honesty, let's sit down, do market replay and keep firing them off in SIM. Because now, even though it's not real money, you're starting to see all the positive effects of doing the right thing. You're seeing the dollar signs add up. The more you do that, that's going to override that fear because, hey, now I've done this, you know, a thousand times. So yeah. you start to overcome that fear and there's really no no risk of loss if you're doing it in like a market replay or yeah. some type of simulation like that. There's If you lose, big deal. You hit reset, do it again, do it again, do it again. Yeah, that's great. It, it's, I think um, it's easy to overlook the skill side of what trading is. And I think a lot of fear comes from a place of like good. Like it's actually good that you're afraid because if you're ever in a dangerous situation that you're not prepared for, you should be afraid. And to step into the market and to not be skilled in what you're doing, um, something bad is probably going to happen to you. And that fear response is a, a, probably a very healthy thing. And your solution here of, of putting in that work, getting those reps in, as they say, um, and, and even just building that skill of entering and exiting, uh, is powerful. And that's something that shouldn't be understated. And that is like a nice way to, the more you are, you, you actually have something to be confident in, uh, the less fearful you're going to be just as a, you know, a default to that. So it's a really great, yeah, it's a really great comment. Really good question. And, not, and not to mention when you do the back testing yeah. and you, you watch your account go into drawdown, I think you see by doing the right thing, it comes back. That gives you a sense of calm in the future. The more times you've seen that, you don't you don't freak out as much. You know, yeah. you get more comfortable with it because you know, hey, I'm that much closer to coming back up out of this. Mm, for sure. Hey, what platform do you use for trading? You use Ninja Trader? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Ninja Trader exclusively. Interesting. Yeah, I um, I've since I've started this funded program, I've been trying to get a little bit into. I use Sierra Charts, um, and it's it's. Learning a new trading pat platform is just not fun at all. <laughs> I just... Well, I remember when I first, um, when I went from Scott's Trade to Trade Station, uh -huh. I, got, I got the platform, I clicked on it, it was just a blank screen. I'm like, what do I do here? Yeah. <laughs> and then when I went to Ninja Trade, I'm like, man, where's everything at? But now that I use it, I have all my hotkeys set up where I need. It's just, it's, it's easy once you know it. Yeah. I, I firmly um, believe it's actually even a source of edge. The ability that I have like inside of Sierra to just, manipulate or to get in and out of the market or to do analysis quickly or to know where things are. It just makes the whole process more effortless. And it really, to me, the way it's set up for me is even a, a source of edge or at least contributes to it. Um, and it's very interesting because going back to a new charting platform to your exact point, opening it up and just being like, Ugh, this, <laughs> where is everything? <laughs> Why can't yeah. I figure out and move this around my chart? It's a, uh, it's not a fun thing to do, but you know, it's part of the job. So we, uh, we progress on. Um, well, Mike, listen, I tell you, it, it, we're running out of time, but it was, uh, I don't want to keep you any you know, longer, especially here in the middle of the trading day, but I'm really I'm happy you came on. I'm really glad that you came on. It was really cool to have this, to talk with you. Um, do you have any, like on the way out, if somebody's listening to this kind of digging your vibe, wants to know more about you or, even like what you offer, where, where, where would you point somebody? Where can they find out more about you or where can they keep up with you? Uh, just go to my YouTube page, Mike Swartz, S-W-A-R-T-Z. That's where nice. all of my stuff pretty much is. Nice. Very cool. I used, yeah. to, I used to do some coaching, but I really, I enjoy YouTube a lot more. <laughs> oh, awesome. Good on you.
you know, because okay, cool. I'm, I'm really an introvert at heart. I'm really an introvert. Before okay. we were even coming on here, I was ah, jittery. I was nervous. Uh-oh. I don't like, I don't, I don't like, you know, really being the center of attention or anything like that. So it was, I started, I was like, oh man, what did I get myself into today? <laughs> oh, very good. Well, I, uh, good job pushing through. And I honestly, I never would have, if you didn't tell me that I never would have thought it. You've, uh, well, I'm just that passionate about trading. So trading makes it a little bit easier. And that's why I like doing YouTube. I get to talk about something and try to work on not being such an introvert, but I, I can't help it yeah. because when, when I'm not, when I'm not doing anything, what I'm doing, I'm back at the charts. I'm trying to study to get better because I want to be the best that I can be. Hmm. Good on so. you. I love to hear that. Okay. Well then uh, Mike Schwartz, if you guys want to go check him out, give him some love, uh, throw him a subscription. And if you dig what he's saying and want to keep up with him. So very, very cool. To everybody else who's watching it, you guys know what to do. Uh, I'm glad you guys are here hanging out with us. I hope you enjoyed this conversation as well. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see all of you on the next one as well. Take care, everybody. Hey, thanks for watching to the very end. If you enjoyed this episode, there's a good chance you're going to love the other ones. So spend some time on the channel and make sure you show some love on the way out. Now, if you're struggling with your trading and you'd like my help, Everything I'm involved with will be linked in the descriptions. Happy trading.